after e4, d6, and d4. Black can play e5. This is a very popular variation of the pierce defense. Black purposely gives us the possibility to take and after take swap queens. King takes back. But now you have to know what to do. The game is not it's not like you have a great advantage or anything. But let's see how to take it from here. What are the most accurate moves to beat this defense? I personally played against this defense against a woman grandmaster who defeated me. And that was just one of the reasons that pushed me to study this period, but also because many other players do, even at grandmaster level. So, how to punish this one? Bishop to c4 now, attacking this pawn in f7. And now we're going to look at a few options. Let's start with f6. Okay, white goes on with knight, knight c3. And the idea, obviously, is to improve the position of our knight. You've got ideas b5 and d5 as well. So after c6, the idea of also playing b5 and the usual moves of the, of the pairs, a4. This is crucial in order to stop b5 from happening. You don't need b5 to happen. So what, what to do now? Let's say the black bishop, we're going to go to bishop c5 and bishop b4. After, let's say, bishop c5. Okay, f4. This is the right move now. We're going to be able to take back with the bishop when we get taken, and develop a and, uh, castle alongside if instead black develops knight to d7 this is the best move knight to f3 we don't need to take because then we're just helping black develop he's got a solid pawn chain after all a5 comes now by black these are all best moves rook to f1 we're gonna align the rook on this file since you're about to open that file and after bishop to d6 this is the best move obviously because after all the swaps the rook will be really strong so black will have to defend this pawn unless he wants to take but if he takes us then we can take back so there's no point bishop to d2 develop okay now black may think of winning a tempo like that by taking okay well that's fine let's ignore it and go on with development long castle we completely developed even though it's crazy because we're giving black the possibility to play g5 how do we punish this move e5 we're obviously threatening to take this bishop and we don't have to worry about black counterattacking g4 because after taking the bishop and black taking us, he's going to have triple pawn and we can take all of them one by one. So after pawn takes in e5, knight to e4, again attacking the bishop. Bishop e7. Okay, now we recapture in e5 because you see bishop c7 wouldn't really help because we also have an attack on g5 plus an attack on uh, f7 with the threat of a fork so bishop to e7 is the most solid knight takes in e5 and we're completely winning here we've got a threat of knight f7 let's see why can the knight not take in e5 because obviously bishop f4 comes with a check of the rook it's a discovered check and when the king moves then you can recapture the knight with an attack on the rook and also there's double attack on f6 if the knight goes back then again, bishop to e5, attacking the rook. The rook is trapped, so after knight blocks, still, you just have too much attack. Remember that the knight in d7 is pinned. You just win the knight. And there's there's not no coming back here. So in this position, what happens if the knight doesn't take us, but rather plays the best move, which is queen uh, king to c7. Okay, knight f7 traps the rook, so we are going to win that. Knight g f6, best moves. Best move is now, obviously, there's an attack on our knight, so we've got to play this. Knight e to g5. The attack on the rook remains. Rook f8, you can make a fork. Many moves are just not possible now. We also have a threat of bishop f4. Let's make an example. Rook to g8, developing. Then bishop check. King moves away. The rook goes to e1 with an attack on the bishop. The bishop have to move. The bishop has to move, but where? Let's say c5, for instance. Position been evaluated plus six for a while, just so you know. Knight to e6 is the best move. Threatening a very strong bishop c7 move. Let's say, for example, rook takes in g2 with um, the black player is finally activating his pieces. But ever, there's so many loose pieces on the board it's it's crazy bishop c7 check king moves to the only available square and now knight takes c5 
Knight takes back only move unless black wants to give up even more material but this is rook f6 is the best move you're winning material and yeah we can stop this here let's do from the start d6 d4 e5 take 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 okay bishop c4 attacking the pawn and we're looking at f6 that's the first thing we're looking at knight c3 c6 this has to be met with a4 stopping v5 it's very important now we're going to look at this move we, sh we haven't looked at. Bishop to b4. Okay, again, f4. So that's the familiar pattern. And we don't care about this taking, believe it or not. Bishop takes, pawn takes. It's all fine. It's a crazy game, this period. And now after pawn takes in f4 and us taking back, we have a double isolated pawn and another isolated pawn. Whilst black structure is, uh, pawn structure is actually perfect. However, the engine confirms that this is completely winning for white because of have better developing chances we'll be able to do tactics so let's see knight to e7 developing remember that black player lost the right to castle that's very important castle check king e8 knight to f3 bishop to g4 now looks like it's about to do any other damage but not really because if we take back it's actually fixing our pawn structure so the bishop goes to but there were nowhere there was nowhere else to go for the bishop and the knight can't really develop to a6 because what else is going to go next? c5. But meanwhile, meanwhile we'll be developing, we're doubling up the rooks and going to the 7 rank. So as soon as the knight takes this pawn in a4, we will be completely winning. White goes on with e5 in this position anyway. And now take, take is not a good idea. So let's say for example take take and now we have that an attack on g7 we're going to be trapping the rook so bishop takes knight we take back it's smashing our pawn structure completely but there will be no coming back in terms of material and not even let's say bishop takes pawn takes and knight f5 actually saves the player because knight is protecting this pawn that's true but like look look at the development of the of our opponent now white plays rook h to e1 position evaluated plus 12 so that's ridiculous so let's go from the start we're going to look at a different thing now take 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 bishop c4 what happens after king to e8 to protect the pawn in f7 okay knight c3 usual developing moves knight to f6 a3 we want to stop idea of bishop to b4 it's really annoying when bishop to b4 happens because you see bishop to b4 and then what are you going to do to defend this pawn you don't want to play bishop to d3 again because you, you would have wasted the tempo and bishop c4 is the best place for the bishop you don't need to play f3 because you want to play f4 right or knight to f3 or the two of them one at a time and so you don't want to play f3 to protect that pawn and here you can't really defend the knight because obviously then the knight is still pinned and black takes that pawn so here you simply prevent that with a3 very important chess principles c6 knight f3 attacking the pawn bishop to d6 bishop to e3 developing bishop to g4 attacking the knight we are not pinned we're going to play knight to h4 we don't want to trade that knight because it's important to put pressure on this pawn because when your opponent has a knight in f6 and the pawn is not defending the e, the e square uh, the e5 pawn your knight becomes extremely valuable the knight in f3 knight b to d7 developing h3 let's kick the bishop away bishop to h5 still not allowing us to play knight to our to the natural square f, f3 okay well in this case knight f5 threatening a fork that it's a very very strong move and also attacking this bishop by the way what to do bishop f8 seems to be holding everything however now we play f3 now we have to give up on the idea of putting the knight in f3 we play f3 and after g6 bishop to g6 it was going to happen anyway long castle so let's go on knight to b6 attacking the bishop take and after take back is crazy we just gave the bishop pair you would have never expected this from me but yet it happened people change move on we're gonna play knight to b5 now this is a very strong threat so that's why we did it 
Rook to c8, best moves to stop it, still doesn't help because knight b goes to d6, check, should win the rook. Unless black wants to give up their bishop pair and now we are recapturing our beloved bishop pair. If we don't have it, our opponent doesn't have it either. Knight takes back, king takes, only move. Knight takes, rook takes and now h4 is the best move, we're gonna close it here. Well, go, okay, let's go on a couple more moves. h4. Obviously, we want to play, you know, g4, h5. For example, knight like h5 looks like it stops the, the, the pawn, but that's the worst move, right? You remember this is thematic move, g4. The knight has to move, and then h5 wins a piece. So knight h5 is a stupid move. h6 gives the bishop a shelter to go to, okay, well, a4. Just in case black plays b5, which is annoying. Okay, knight to h5 now. Seems like it can happen. The idea is to go to g3. Or f4, where the knight will be sitting quite comfortable. g4, okay, that's fine. Knight f4. And now h5. The bishop has to move to h7. And now rook to d2. The advantage is finalized. There is absolutely nothing to fear now. We're playing the endgame with, with up the exchange. So in this position, you might mention how come rook c8, you know, why not another, because rook c8 allows us to win the exchange. What if, well, rook to d8. Well, okay, then knight c7 is mate. Did you even notice that? Okay, well, what about rook to b8? Is he still mate? Yes. Wake up. So from the start, e5, take, take. Take, take. This is e4. Let's look at something else. Bishop to e6 now. Crazy enough, this is part of that variation. It's one of the most popular moves. We do take take back, but this is all calculated by black. Black purposely puts these two pawns double, doubled up and isolated, but they're actually quite strong in the center. It, they do allow black a lot of control over the center. Black has traded everything into an endgame. There are no queens on the board. So... The plan here is to exploit to win by experience and also by knowledge which is annoying here the move is the key move is knight to h3 because knight f3 then black plays bishop to d7 d6 and that's exactly what that woman grandmaster played against me and that's extremely solid and i realized in, my, in that case that the knight in f3 was actually not doing well so knight to f6 comes now with an attack f3 Remember, knight c3 will have run into bishop b4. It's really annoying to meet. So, well, okay, you could have also played f3 at that point. But in this case, we have, a, we have a better pawn structure, so let's keep it. h6 by black, stopping knight g5 from happening. Knight f2. We should be able to go to d3 or g4, depending on what black does. Let's say, for example, knight c6 developing, a4. So let's look at two options here. Let's go, for example, knight b4, attacking a square c2. Obviously, you play knight a3, stopping that from happening. c6, c3, kicking the knight away. That You don't have to worry about it. And now the knight can't go to d3. Knight back to a6. The idea of going to c5 eventually. From where it will be sitting good enough. b4 now. And the knight is not really effective. King c7 is the best move to develop the rooks. Knight to c4. And eventually we're going to finalize our attack over e5. So after bishop to d6, what to do? Okay, king e2 is the best move. Rook a to d8, it looks like it's completely equal position. But you gotta you got to realize that it's about the mobility of the pieces. Bishop to e3 attacking this pawn. What's going to do? What's the black player going to do? King to b8. Okay, b5. And now we're going to open the files. Remember, knight c5 will only be protected by a bishop that can be taken. So that will be trouble. So after take, take... And knight to c7. Well, again, look, knight c c5. This just loses to knight takes here. Rook takes back, and then bishop can take the knight. And if the knight moves, then you can save your knight. So obviously we're gonna look at. We're go so obviously we're gonna look at knight c7. But still, bishop check. And that's it. Uh, this is actually mate. But even if the king had gone somewhere else. And in this position, we went through the plan of knight b4. You see how it just fails. You just play knight a3, you're 100% safe. What happens after bishop to uh, c5, actually? Let's go through bishop c5, developing. Okay, knight to d3, attacking the bishop. And after bishop to b6, c3 comes. 
king to e7, best moves, these are all best moves, b4, idea of a5 winning the game, a6 has to happen, knight a3, rook a to d8 now, and now king to e2. The king is safe from every possible check. Okay, rook d7 ready to double up, knight to c4, that's easy how they're all getting familiar now, now we've got a double attack over e5. This is now inevitable. Rook h to d8, and the best move is rook to d1. And after knight to h5, idea of going to a4, potentially force a swap also because these knights are too strong. It's a bit crazy because now it looks like we don't have that attack on e5 anymore. However, these are the best move. b5 comes. Now, take take is not convenient because it makes our rook also attack a5, so the knight can't go there anymore. And if the knight goes to a7, then you can take the bishop, pawn takes back, and rook takes knight for free. So after knight moves now to a5, now we take this pawn in e5. We're completely winning. We're also attacking the rook. After rook to d6, saving the rook. Still, you play this. Pawn takes, you're completely winning. There's no coming back. I mean, if, if black takes back, then bishop to a3 finishes the game. If black plays knight to b3, attacking the rook and the bishop, looks like a very good move. Okay, taking b7. And it's crazy because, look, the, the, the square is defended. B, b8 is defended. But still, knight takes a1 is met with bishop to a3. Masterpiece. Pure engine move. Obviously, we pin in this rook so that we can promote. And when the the rook takes back, we have knight c6 recapturing the rook. Or more even better, knight c6 first. And then we can take this rook, for instance. Or even better, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight c6, and take the rook, and then you can promote. That's probably the best. So let's say black plays c5, just to make an example. Okay, here you recapture the the knight. You have double attack over c5, done in material at the moment, but then what, what's black going to do? Let's say rook b8, for instance. Okay, well, a5, the bishop will be no longer protecting this pawn, unless he wants to go to a7, but then a6... The rook can't take because bishop c5 comes with check. You can take the rook then and uh, the game plays itself. If bishop does take, then carry on. You're completely winning. And you might wonder what happens if instead our opponent ignores that and takes this, this pawn. And after taking the bishop, well, the problem is we're still going to go to c5. So in this position earlier, just a few moves ago, instead of c5... What if the, the black player just moves the knight back? Remember that the black player just won a rook from us, so he might just give up on the exchange, but at least play on with extra material. Well, okay, knight c6 is possible, as mentioned before. Check, and it's the most accurate way to play. King e8. Okay, first take this rook. The rook can't take back because of the promotion. And, yeah. We are going to promote and, and win more. If pawn takes back... Then you simply take this one. There's no way for black to both take the knight and protect and stop the promotion. The last line we're going to look at before closing this video is take, 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 bishop c4 and knight f6. Giving up the pawn f7, but at least with an attack on the pawn in e4. So obviously that's something that has to be faced. Knight to f3 is the best move for white. Now, obviously, let's say black plays this crazy move, now, uh, pawn to h6. So obviously, the idea is to go to a5 with an attack here, and that's completely over already. Knight takes e4 here is not possible. For the same reason, knight e5 threatening, knight f7 winning the rook. Black knight doesn't have any threat from that, if you think about it. Knight d6 is the best move by black, but still, you actually can go there. Knight takes, and now the only way for black to stop losing materials, knight takes, but then bishop takes. You're up a pawn with no compensation at all. You go into a winning endgame. So those are just blunders. Let's not look at them. So in this position, let's say knight to c6 to defend this pawn and keep developing. Okay, well, in that case, we can take this pawn. And now, can the, the black player play knight takes e4, taking our central pawn, considering that we can't take e5 anymore? Okay, well, bishop to d5 now attacks this knight. That's how we're going to play it. Best move would be bishop to f5 developing, but now bishop takes knight. Pawn takes back. Knight to e5 comes now. Bishop to c5 by black. Attacking the pawn f2 twice. 
Okay, believe it or not, the move now is a bit crazy. One of those moves that you want, don't want to play because then the piece will remain hanging. Knight to c6, check. And now king to d8. It looks like you're a bit in trouble. Your knight's under attack. Your pawn in f2 is under attack, especially the king will be a bit unsafe. And the development of the black player looks really good, actually. So what's going on here? Well, this just allows you to play knight e5, check. And then the knight can go to d3, guarding f2. You are 100% safe. And also in d3, you're attacking the bishop. So what happens after the check and the king goes to c8? You don't have any checks now. How are you going to stop the attack on f2? Bishop e3. So after bishop takes and pawn takes, you've got an isolated pawn. King to b7, attacking the knight. Knight a5 check, we're going to save the knight. The knight is not trappable. King to a6, allowing to develop the connection of the rooks. Best move is castle, obviously with an attack on the bishop. Rook h to f8, most active move by our opponent. Knight to c6. Rook to f6, attacking the knight once again. Knight to a3 is the best move. Again, the rook can't really, shouldn't really take that because rook takes f5 gives much better chances for white. If black plays knight to d2, attacking the rook, rook to f4. Position evaluated like plus 3 or something like that. Black has an idea of playing knight to b4. And then eventually reach the square d5. If black plays, so well, rook to b8 is not possible because you could just take it. If black plays, let's say, rook to e8, for instance. But knight to b4 check, king b7. Knight to d5 attacks the rook. The rook can't move without losing the bishop, so the rook will have to stay on the file. Rook to f7. Rook to b4 check. After king to c6, it's a weird position. It's a really weird position. Rook to d1. We're going to close the line here. Position evaluated as if white was up a piece. We're up two pawns. But position is much better. Now here the knight will have to move. Knight e4, let's say. Let's close the line here. Knight to b5. We have an idea of going to a7. Taking the pawn in a7 for free. So after the pawn pushes, you just go here to c7. And then to a6. Rook takes for two knight here isn't really a good move. Because first you will play rook c4 check. And then you can take the rook without being recaptured. So we'll close this video after the last line, which is the following one. The one with, uh, okay, b c4, knight f6, knight f3, and now instead of knight c6 or any other move, it will be bishop to d6. Okay, how to punish this? Knight g5, attacking f7. Rook to f8, protecting it. Knight f7 comes anyway. The rook can't really take, right? So king to e8, and now knight takes the bishop. Pawn takes back, knight to c3. This is how we punish this stupid opening. Knight to g4 idea here. Double attack on f2, you simply play f3. You go absolutely nothing to worry, the knight will have to go back. So instead of that move, if instead, let's say, let's uh, knight to c6. Okay, f3, that's just a, a move that happens. You have a very strong pawn chain. Knight to d4, attacking c2, we can let that happen. We don't mind because of bishop to d3. Bishop developing to e6. Okay, bishop to e3. We have the bishop pair. Up a pawn. No weaknesses. And we're about to castle long. And obviously, d5 here looks like a good pawn break. But it doesn't work. Because you can just take. And after knight takes back, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, pawn takes. And that's even more material. And by the way, in this position, after the bishop had gone to d6 and we just played knight g5, we mentioned how rook f8 just doesn't help. Bishop to e6, how, to how do we respond to this move? Don't worry too much, just take it. Pawn takes back, and now knight f7.